Guys, we're finally about to see a big move happen for Bitcoin. Today, I need to bring you a couple of charts all lining up. I'm also going to talk about the latest when it comes to what's going on behind the scenes, things affecting the crypto space moving forward. So guys, make sure to stick around from the beginning until the end. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Chris, bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day, teaching you how to make money in this market. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. So with that said, guys, let's talk about this. So on the four hourly time frame, you can basically see that Bitcoin has been a stable coin for like four or five days already. You can see that we've been trading within this tiny little range between 28,900 and 29,100. So during the last few days, we've basically seen Bitcoin just do nothing at all, no volatility. So uh, of course, people are getting bored. And I will talk about what this low volatility means for Bitcoin because we're actually seeing historical low volatility for Bitcoin right now. And the last time that happened, it was usually a pretty good indication of what's to come next. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing I also want to talk about is this trend line right here. And uh, maybe we could adjust it a little bit to the downside to account for these wicks right here. So you can see that we're at least having that trend of higher lows still intact here. Also, on the daily time frame, you can see that we are squeezing inside of this falling wedge. Now, falling wedges in general tend to lead to breakouts to the upside. So, uh, and I also intentionally left this one right here because you can see we had the same thing. We did have a breakout. We did have consolidation right here. This was massive consolidation on the daily time frame. Then we had another boom, breakout to the upside, consolidation, and this typically leads into another breakout to the upside. Now, this is maybe more apparent on something like the 12 hourly chart. So you can see that we are still squeezing inside of this wedge right here. So this is gonna break out within like, yeah, within a couple of days. So we're keeping an eye on this one right now, guys. This could lead into a nice little bit of a breakout to the upside. Now for traditional markets, you can see that since going down here, we have since then actually gone into the orange box here again. We did have a rejection, we went down, we retested the support level at the red line here, found some more momentum to the upside from this point. So maybe we can start to slowly regain this level, but still we are inside of this big resistance uh, box. So pay attention to that, but things are not looking too bad right now. We do have a couple of catalysts for us to potentially have some more upside. And if you look at the volatility right now, we're actually seeing historical low volatility for Bitcoin. This may seem a little bit confusing, but all you're seeing here is basically just the monthly volatility. Uh, the one month is actually the pink one. So this is obviously the one that is going to be the most um, volatile in terms of swings to the up and to the downside. And you can see that we are at historical low volatility here. And uh, the last time we saw this being this low was actually right here at $16,000. You can see the volatility here. It was after the bear market accumulation, and then we went up from this point. And if you look at previous times in history, when we have been at this low volatility on the one month chart, uh, it actually has almost always been after accumulation, after a bear market. Look at this, post bear of 2020, we had this low volatility right here. And that was uh, after the COVID crash, after the accumulation. And then from this point, we did see a massive pump to the upside. Let's look at the bear market of 2018 and 19. After the bear market, we went down right here. We did have two drops in volatility. So this was uh, almost at the uh, swing low here of the bear market. And then also at the accumulation phase here, still at a very low price. And then from that point, we did go up. Now look at this as well, the bear market of 2015. We did have that bear market. And right here, we had massive low volatility. And then after this, we did go up. You had another chance right here. Volatility went down a lot. And then from this point, we did go up. So basically, every time we've seen this low volatility for Bitcoin, uh, it has ended up going up after this accumulation, which makes sense because when you're seeing low volatility, basically meaning the people who want to sell, they've all sold, there's not a lot of sellers left. And if there's not a lot of sellers left, well, of course, there's gonna be some catalyst at some point pumping the Bitcoin price. And uh, yeah, that is very, very nice. Now, a couple of things to pay attention to at the start of this week. 
Expect the FUD around Justin Sun and his companies to continue developing. This is something I've been talking about already. I'm going to continue to talk about that moving forward, even a little bit in this video. We also have Fed officials. They will be speaking throughout the week and will likely offer further insight as to what they hope to see from the CPI data. So these are some of the key uh, things to keep your eyes on right now. Also, you do have the first Bitcoin ETF decision, the deadline being on the second ETF here, being on the 13th of August, so in just a couple of days. Apart from that, we do have some more drama regarding Justin Sun, Huobi, and so on. So this is a statement put out by Huobi. There is a notice, and this is translated from Chinese, even though Justin will embezzle the funds, Justin has vast personal wealth compared to Huobi, so there won't be a bank run. So basically what they're saying, this is rhetoric being fed to Huobi and please internally. Basically they're saying that yes, okay, maybe Huobi is in trouble, but Justin Sun has so much money, so even if Huobi is in trouble, he has so much money he can pay off all of this debt. Now if we look at the current balance on Huobi, it is $2.5 billion. The problem is that $662 million is in Tron. So this is very illiquid. If we do see a bank run, this is going to go down very quickly. 500 million is in Yobi token, same thing here. This is gonna dr drastically drop if you see the Yobi token price go down. There's $884 million in Bit BTC, which is also supposed to also cover the $3 billion in Bitcoin issued on Tron. So how can 884 million cover 3 billion in BTC issued on Tron? I don't know. At 168 million in Huobi BTC. So this leaves 286 million dollars in other assets. So at the end of the day, even if all the other liquid assets on the exchange in total are less than one third of the reported amount of USDT obligations. So this is an issue. This is something we definitely have to monitor. As for Justin Sun himself, he has been saying, ignore the fund, keep building Tron and Yobi will thrive through continuous development. Trust in our vision and community efforts for a stronger future. Perseverance guarantees success. The Tron price has not gone down significantly. So um, yeah, but of course, this is something you can uh, artificially ho hold at a higher price. If, you're, if you have enough money, you can just pump up the price here by putting in bids. So yeah, um, not much to talk about here. So guys, that is basically what I got for you. Keep your eyes on all of these things and I will see you in the next one.